Hi, today we're going to see how to implement super tokens with a React and an Express app. Uh, we will be implementing sign in with Google and email password login. Uh, as you can see, we have a simple React app. Uh, this was created using the create React app command. Uh, we also have an API server, which is a simple Express app. Uh, the API server is listening on port 3001 and the React app is on port 3000. To get started, we visit supertokens.io, uh, click on docs. Um, click on the recipe section and since we want to implement social login and email password we will click on this recipe click setup front end the first thing we want to do is uh, install the front end SDK we've already done that so I'm going to skip this part the second step is to initialize the SDK so I'm going to copy this code and paste it in app.js uh, now I'm going to change some of these values based on what we want Right, so there are a couple of parts to this. The first is the app information. Uh, I'm going to call my app, my demo app. Uh, the API domain, which is essentially this Express server, is running on localhost 3001, and my website is on localhost 3000, um, as can be seen by this. Uh, I'm going to initial initialize the third-party email password recipe. This recipe essentially takes care of rendering all the login UI um, on the front end. And I'm going to initialize the Google uh, provider as well as the session management uh, recipe. The next step is to uh, add routes. So we are going to use React Router DOM for our app. Um, and we need to add our, uh, uh, the, the Super Tokens React Router DOM handler to our switch statement. Essentially, this handler will detect if the current route, uh, the website route, can be handled by super tokens, and if yes, it will uh, present the relevant UI. By default, it handles all the auth uh, slash auth routes. So if we go to slash auth, we should see the uh, sign in UI. And here we are. Uh, we can see that it has the forgot password flow, um, the sign up form, the sign in form, as well as sign in with Google. The next step is to um, protect a route. So right now, if we visit uh, the slash route, we can essentially access it even if you're not logged in. But let's change that by wrapping it around the auth provider. Uh, this is the slash route, and we want to essentially wrap this component with um, the auth wrapper component so that it's accessible only if a user is logged in. If we visit our website now and reload the page, we see that we redirected to slash auth. Um, if we try and visit slash, it would again redirect to slash auth because we're not logged in. The next step on the front end is to add, add Axios interceptors for sessions, but we're not using Axios, so we're going to skip this. We're done with the front end setup. Let's go on to the back end. For our backend setup, the first step is to install SuperTokens node. Again, I have already done that, so I'm going to skip this. We're going to call the init function just like we did on the front end. So I'm going to copy this code. So as we can see, there are different parts to this init function. The first is uh, we need to tell the SDK uh, where to find the super token core. This is essentially an HTTP service uh, which interacts with your database. Um, for this demo, we can use um, the one that we've hosted at trysupertokens.io. Uh, but you will want to sign up uh, to either use our managed service or you can host the core yourself. Uh, the app info we've copied directly from the front end. Uh, and just like the front end, we have a recipe list where we initialized the two recipes. And to the Google um, provider, we've given the client secret as well as the client ID. The next step is to add cores and SuperTokens middleware.
The supercritical middleware essentially exposes all the APIs uh, which will be consumed by the front end. So for example, if I click on the sign-in button, it's going to call the sign-in API which is exposed through this middleware. Then we want to add the error handler. This error handler will catch all the errors that the uh, that an API can throw um, and send relevant response to the front end. In case an error is uh, something that this cannot handle, it will propagate it to your error handler. Finally, we want to add an API, uh, but for this demo, let's skip that. Uh, but if you were to add one, you would add it in the middle of the middleware and the error handler. Let's now try and log in. So I had created a user earlier, um, so I'm just going to try and log in with that user. And as you can see, uh, we got routed to uh, the slash route and uh, this time it did not redirect us to sign in because we logged in. Um, what we want to do here is show the user ID and a sign out button. For that, I've created a, a home component, essentially, um, which uh, displays the user ID and the sign out button. Let's use this instead of the, um, the default UI that React gives us. So let's replace that UI with the home component. If you go back and um, essentially reload the page, we're going to see that we see the home component, except we don't see any user ID and the sign out button doesn't really do anything. Uh, let's add functionality to that. So to first get the user ID, um, the auth wrapper that we used earlier, uh, this exposes a context uh, using which we can fetch the user ID. So we're going to use that to get the user ID. And finally, when sign out is clicked, we want to call the sign out function and then redirect the user to the auth page after that. As you can see, uh, we can now see the user ID and if we click on sign out, it works. Um, so let's try sign with Google now. And this works as well. Um, so you hope we've implemented super tokens in a simple React app. We've got Google sign in, email password sign in. You can add other providers. We've got session management. And there are many other features that we have uh, which allow you to customize the UI as well as the backend APIs that we expose. Thank you.